Hello and welcome to our top 10 FL Studio 20 tips that will transform your workflow. FL Studio is an incredible DAW with a lot of tricks up its sleeve and some of these tips will definitely speed up your workflow so you can focus on creating great music. So without further ado, the first FL Studio 20 tip is the insert space function. Now, if I'd have known about this feature earlier, it would have saved me so, so much time. And if you're not aware of this tip, it might just be a game changer for you. So for this video, I've quickly put together a beat to help demonstrate these tips in an actual FL Studio project. Let's take a very quick listen. Okay, so let's say I want to create a space between two sections of the track. For example, if I want to extend this intro by eight bars. Now, if you're selecting everything on the right and dragging everything across, it can be very annoying to select everything. Sometimes certain clips don't get moved when they should, and it actually can be quite frustrating if you're working with larger, more complex projects. A much simpler way to do this is to drag along this top bar to select the amount of space you want to add. Go to File, edit and hit insert space. Now you've instantly got a space between the two sections without having to manually drag anything. There's also a slice and insert space option, which means if there are overlapping audio files or automation clips, FL Studio will slice them and move them across separately. Tip number two is the blur tool. Now this feature blew my mind when I found out about it and I use it all the time to create spacious evolving pads from FX and various other sounds. Let's say you have a sound like this. Now, in order to utilize this feature, we need the sound in audio format. At the moment, it's just MIDI data. So the quickest way to turn this into audio is firstly, make sure your MIDI pattern is selected in the channel rack, then navigate to patterns and select quick render as audio clip. The clip will then appear in the channel rack and you can just drag it into the playlist. Now to add the blur effect, double click the pattern, right click on this bottom waveform here, and select edit in audio editor. Inside the audio editor, hit this droplet icon up here and you should see this pop-up menu. Here you can edit the amount of blurring you want in the resulting waveform, how much the blurring is offset by and the amount of gain of the blurred sound that is added to the mix. So we're gonna set the amount about here and just leave the rest as it is. We can then add it to the project by clicking and dragging this arrow into the playlist and now let's take a listen to the new sound. As you can tell, it's blurred and warped the sound to create this completely new ambient pad. So yeah, a really, really cool feature. Also remember, if you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. It really does mean a lot. And be sure to comment down below any more FL Studio tips that I didn't mention in this video. Tip number three is not so much a tip as a warning. And it's something I did when I first started using FL Studio and can cause beginners to run into all sorts of problems. Basically, whenever adding gain automation, you should never ever use these main mixer faders. There are several reasons why this is a horrible idea, but the main reason is once the automation clip is created, it renders these faders more or less useless. If you try and tweak the fader at any part of the song, it will just snap back to the point at which you automated it. It can get really annoying and it gets even worse if you're trying to use any sort of MIDI controller to control these faders. A much better way is to add a fruity balance effect to the mixer track and automate the volume knob of the plugin instead. This way you can continue to use the mixer fader to actually mix your track without any obstacles. 
A good rule of thumb here is to add it to one of the last slots so that any other effects above are controlled directly by the gain automation. Tip number four is to create useful templates so you can dive straight into making beats and skip a lot of the tedious project organization stuff. If you start each project with this blank FL Studio project file, you're going to end up spending a lot of time naming, colouring and rearranging your mixer channels, playlist channels and so on. A huge time saver is to create a personalised template for your style of production. For example, you can right click, hit rename, colour and icon, choose your track name and hit this shape here and choose the track colour. Then maybe for two or three tracks below, you can right click and select group with above track. And then on your top track, hit auto colour group. Then you can just use these lower tracks for additional drum patterns or automation clips. From there, you can create a bunch of patterns for each fundamental element of your track. So drums, synth, bass, that kind of thing. At the end of the day, a lot of this is personal taste. Your template will help your workflow, so it should be designed exactly how you want. For example, you may have separate tracks for kicks, snares, etc. Like I said, it's all just down to personal taste. So once you have the template, you can save the project in your FL Studio templates folder, which FL Studio automatically creates on your computer. On Windows, you go into your program files, into image line, FL Studio 20, data, and then templates, and then save the template anywhere in this folder. Now, when you open up FL Studio, go to file and new from template and just select your template. Now you can dive right into creating amazing music without having to worry about a lot of the organizational stuff. Tip number five is a really quick way to duplicate a mixer channel state, including the plugins and other parameter levels. There's actually a really, really easy way to do this. So you right click on the mixer channel you want to duplicate, go to file and left click and hold save mixer track state as. Now drag this option onto any mixer channel and all the plugins and settings will be duplicated onto that channel. It's as simple as that. So guys, please make sure you're backing up your projects regularly. If you're a seasoned producer, you know just as well as I do that things can and will go wrong. If you're not backing up your files, you literally could lose hours of work because FL Studio decides to crash at the worst moment. To make sure FL Studio is backing up your files frequently, navigate to options and select file settings. Then under backup, set this to frequently, every five minutes and before risky operations. This is very useful if you mess up and need to revert to how the project was five, 10, 15 minutes before. Then over here in the backups folder, you can then access all the auto saved projects. Tip number seven was again, a bit of a game changer for me. So let's say you have an automation clip that you want to control a number of different parameters. For example, here's a basic kick and a bass. Now let's just create a standard automation clip on the kick to build up the volume. Let's say we want the bass to follow this automation pattern. So instead of creating a new automation clip and copying the pattern across, all we need to do, as you normally would, is right click the channel volume, but instead of selecting create automation clip, you select link to controller. Then under internal controller, we can then select the automation clip we want to link the bass to. And just to make sure the kick is still controlled by the same automation pattern, we can uncheck remove conflicts. And now, As you can see, both the sounds are being controlled by this single automation clip. So I think most advanced producers will know this one, but if you're a beginner, this will save you a lot of headaches when working with MIDI chords and melodies. This feature is fantastic if you want to sequence a MIDI melody, but don't want each individual sound to overlap. When this option is selected, as soon as another MIDI note starts playing, the previous sound will stop. This is perfect for sounds such as 808s, which sound pretty terrible when they start overlapping. So to do this, right click on the sound in the channel rack and select cut itself. Tip number nine is using the strumizer effectively to create smooth, natural sounding chords. So let's say you have a piano chord sequence like this.
You'll notice each chord is quite robotic and static and is played almost too perfectly. If you press Alt and S, it'll bring up this strumizer menu. So using this time control, you can smooth out the chord progression to make it sound much more realistic. This tension control will space the notes out further, the further along the chord you are. And you can even add this kind of velocity ramp to add a little bit more character to the chords as well. And now it sounds like this. Finally, tip number 10, I think the more experienced producers watching this will probably know about but it's definitely worth mentioning for any beginners watching. There are two very useful CPU saving features hidden away in FL Studio menus that you should definitely be aware of. If you often run into CPU issues, overloading, latency, things like that, you should probably be utilizing these features. Firstly is purge unused audio clips. This option will remove all audio files from the project that aren't being used in the playlist, freeing up CPU for other functions. To access this feature, go to the top menu bar, go to Tools, and then under Macros, select Purge Unused Audio Clips. The other option worth mentioning is Switch Smart Disable for all plugins. This option will make sure plugins are deactivated while not in use. This really helps with things such as recording vocals or other instruments and can really drive down the CPU. And there we have it. So that's our 10 FL Studio tips and tricks that will definitely speed up your workflow. If you found you got some value out of this video and want more content like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Again, any support is massively appreciated. Also, I know there are plenty more FL Studio tips out there, so make sure you comment any down below that we didn't cover in this video. And if you want more DAW tips, info on free plugins, free sample packs, and much more, I'll leave a link to our website in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.